So let's talk about sending email directly from a PHP script. So one of the nice things with PHP is that there is an actual function called the mail function that allows you to send email directly from a PHP script. So you can create a variable for the to, a variable for the subject, a variable for the message, so on and so forth. Basically add that all to the mail function and then you can send off an email to whomever you like. So in order for this to work, you do have to have a local email server installed. And so this is one of the reasons why I suggest people start with a shared hosting plan. So if you go to GoDaddy or HostGator or something like that, you pay your three or five dollars per month, they should have a local email uh, server installed onto whatever host that you're using. And so when you go to use the mail function, it will simply use that. So this is something to remember with the mail function is it does have to have that local email server. And I have to say from experience, I prefer... <laughs> I prefer not having to install email servers. It could just be a pain in the butt. So what's great about this is if you want to do things such as send out notifications. Now the, the simple example that I'm going to show you is something that could be used again to send out notifications. Let's say if there is an error or to have somebody log in their account, so on and so forth. So basically you can just have that notification get sent off. It goes through SMTP and then whether they're at their computer, their laptop, or whether they have their watch, they can then get that email message and they can see whatever you're trying to tell them. So it is important to understand when you're going to be sending email that sending email can get complicated uh, in order to send attachments, in order to send things like pictures and that kind of thing. That's, more, uh, that's a more complicated subject. You can use services such as SendGrid and actually use a mail API to connect to a SendGrid infrastructure. So that's one way you can do it. But if all you're doing is you're looking for a very simple way just to be able to send out email notifications by simply using the mail function built into PHP, you can do that. And again, if you're already on a shared hosting uh, server, then you don't have to worry about APIs or any of that type of stuff. So with that, let's go over to the computer, show you how this basic uh, mail function works. And uh, I, th I think you'll be pretty impressed. It's a, it's a pretty cool little function. So this is just a simple script that I created called mail.php. Now it is important to understand with this script, not only am I using the script to actually send an email, but I did put a little troubleshooting routine within the script just to make sure the script actually ran and is updating. So I have a little script ran with the value of the variable time in here. And what this is going to do is after the email is sent, this will simply print on the screen that the script actually ran at the specific computer time. So I do this type of thing, again, as a troubleshooting routine, just to ver verify that the script is running. So if it takes a little while to get the email, I know it's just delayed in the, the internet. It's not a problem with the script itself. But anyways, uh, if we take a look at this, uh, again, as always, we open with a PHP tag to say this is a PHP PHP script. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to create variables for this email. And then we're going to feed those variables to the mail function itself. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do dollar sign two equals. And again, who is this email to? The great part with this is this could be fed from a database. This could be fed from a file. This could be fed from an array. So this could loop through a for each do this type of thing. So Right here, I'm hard coding in who this is to, but again, this could be fed from a different variable. Uh, so to, again, as always, double quotation marks, who it's to, full real email address, close double quotation marks, and semicolon as always. Then we're going to do pound, or I'm sorry, dollar sign subject. So this is gonna be the subject equals, and then so, what is the subject of this email? Pretty self-explanatory, semicolon. Then what is the message going to be? So again, when you do the message, you're gonna to have to think about, is this going to be printed out in text? Is this gonna be printed out as an HTML? You're gonna to have to think about that kind of format matting stuff. For this, basically I'm just doing a basic, you know, test from PHP script make my life easier. But as you get more complicated with the messages, you are going to have to think about the formatting. Again, and with a semicolon. And then we're going to do headers. Now, what's important to understand with the mail script is this is all that's required. Actually, kind of interesting when you think about it. In order for the mail script to run, all you need is to, all you need is subject, and all you need is message. You don't actually need from. From is kind of an add-on that you put on later. So if you send an email using just to, subject, and message, the from will actually just be your server address. So that can be one thing from a security standpoint. If you don't put a from in there, is that 
it will it will tell the person that you email basically the from that will get auto filled in with the server address that the email is coming from so that's one thing you have to think about from a security standpoint also if you don't put in a from it's more likely that spam filters will filter out the the email coming through so even if this is your home you're using gmail or hotmail or something like that if you don't if you don't actually hard code a from in you might have issues with with spam filters blocking it so you can send these email messages without a from again if you don't care especially if this is like an internal email so you're just having you're just having the server tell you about notifications it's not going out to the wider world you may not care about the from uh, but the from is nice again from a security standpoint from an anti-spam standpoint and even one of the cool parts you can do is, is for the from you can actually even have the from be a not real email address and then use gmail filters uh to dump dump like notifications into a specific uh into a specific folder so you know right uh anything from logs at failure.com goes into this specific folder so you can do some interesting things there with with using from but basically here if you want to do a from Going to use it from what you're going to do is you're going to add headers so there's a lot of different uh, things you can add with the headers all we're going to add today is the from if you're more interested in headers you can go do some research so what we're going to do is we're going to create the headers we're going to do equal and so the, the header that we are going to do is we're going to say from uh, colon and then a real email address that this is from and then end double quotation marks and semicolon obviously now uh, this this has nothing to do the time has nothing to do with this particular mail script this doesn't allow mail to function or anything like that I'm just adding this in here again as a little bit of a troubleshooting routine to make sure the script actually fires and then that's where we get to the mail function so this is what the mail function looks like and all you do with the mail function then is you do mail open parentheses then you're gonna do dollar sign two variable for two the variable for subject the variable for message again obviously commas in between and again this is all you have to put in you could actually end it right here if you wanted to but we're going to add in uh, the value for headers just so we get that from there uh, and then we're going to close parentheses and then we're going to do semicolon so this right here this is what's required in order to send the mail and again you can actually hard code everything in instead of using variables here you could actually type you know double quotation marks actually type all that information in here separated by commas but then that would just be ugly and a pain in the butt to troubleshoot then what's going to happen so this is going to fire so the mail is going to fire it's going to send the email to for this question at Eli the computer guy and the thing is to understand with this it's gonna fire and then there's gonna be nothing on the screen so this this just runs and unless you tell something to print or whatever nothing's gonna be printed on the screen so what we're going to do again as part of that troubleshooting routine is we're gonna do print and then we're gonna simply do double quotation marks script ran and then we're going to give basically the computer time when it ran. So this just tells me that it did run. And then if I hit F5, if I refresh, then if this updates, I know it fired again and again and again and again. Again, stupid little troubleshooting routine. Uh, so if we go here, uh, we go to Silicon Dojo forward slash mail dot PHP. And then we run. And there we go. This is all we see on the screen. And again, it's important to understand in the coding world, if you don't code something to happen, it's not going to happen. So if you want something printed on the screen or whatnot, you got to you gotta have it actually printed out. So all I wanted to see is that script ran, and then I get this computer time. Now for me, I can't really read this computer time. This computer time doesn't actually mean a lot to me. But what's important is if I refresh, I see that that time changes. If I refresh... I see that time change. So every time I refresh, I'm sending myself another email. And so again, that's for me, that's just a little troubleshooting routine there. And then uh, if we look down at the bottom, I sent myself an email a little bit earlier. It is important to understand uh, the emails going through the internet, especially coming off the crappy little server on your shared hosting plan. It may take a couple of minutes to get to you. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's not sending the email. To be clear, sending the email is instantaneous, but the email has to get from that server to your, your email account. So that might take a couple of minutes the other thing to realize especially if you're behind oh look okay so see that just that just ticked up to number two so i just got two emails there um 
The other thing to think about is if you're in a corporate world, so you have a real anti-spam solution. <laughs> to be clear, if you have a real anti-spam solution, this crap should be blocked really quick, um, because basically this is kind of this is kind of like a phishing attack, right? If you take a look at this and go back to mail, I mean, again, the thing like from, I could do HR at bankofjapan.com. I could do like that's just that's just coded in there. That's this so you understand. I'm literally right now showing you how a phishing or spear phishing attack actually works. And so there's some ways to prevent that type of thing. Um, and so that's what a corporate email account should block. But yeah. Uh, and so again, so now down here, if you take a look, you see we've now got an eight emails. Now I don't want to show you. Uh, my particular email box. I want, to, I want to keep that a little bit protected. So if we go, we can take a look at the email, and this is the email that I received. So this is the real email that I received. There's no modification here. This is, again, this is just mail, uh, Apple's mail client. Uh, and again, for the email address, we can see test at test.com. And that's what we can see uh, to question at Eli, the computer guy dot com. We can see that the subject is this is a test and we can say, see that this is test from PHP script. So all of this information just came right through. Um, and that's basically how it works. So that's really all there is to the mail PHP script. And this is where I say, where a lot of people talk about wanting to be hackers, I want to be a hacker. And this is why I always laugh at people, is because this is what I say right here, is if you understand how technology works, if you understand how coding and all this works, becoming kind of, I mean, ha hacking is just like, it's just doing the exact same thing you would normally do, just slightly differently. You know what I'm saying? Like, like doing this email right here, I can either do a completely legitimate notification system for, for a web app, or I can do a spear phishing attack. The, dif the difference is insanely trivial. <laughs> so that's why I laugh about those wannabe hackers. So that's really all there is with sending um, email with the mail function in PHP. The main thing to, that you have to remember is you do have to have that local email server installed if you want to be able to actually use this function. Again, that's why I would suggest that you use a, a shared hosting plan, at least to begin with. Again, as you're starting with PHP, pay a couple of bucks for a shared hosting plan. As you understand things more, then you can do your own server. Because this is the problem that you run into with a lot of folks is they try to build their own server from day one and then imagine imagine as you're trying to learn this function you're also trying to troubleshoot an email server right <laughs> this function is easy <laughs> email servers are not uh so again that's if you ever wonder why i suggest certain things this is the type of thing that i say learn how to do this on a shared hosting plan where you basically know it's going to work and then build your own server once you feel comfortable. The other thing again too with this is since you are going to be sending emails, one thing to realize is that if you're having problems, it may not be that your code is the issue. It may be, again, if you're if you're trying to send emails to yourself in a corporate environment, to be clear, your corporate environment should block the hell out of this. This shouldn't even get near your spam mailbox. Um, so if you're in a corporate environment or maybe you, you've you installed uh, very heavy-duty spam filters or something on your email, uh, this type of thing may be blocked. So that's one thing that you, that you have to think about. The other thing, too, is, again, just look in your junk mail, junk mail folder or spam uh, because it may not get dumped into your, your, your normal inbox simply because it should be considered spam at the end of the day. So these are the little things to consider. If you look at this... There's the code. You can copy and paste it. If you're running the code, if that time is coming up, if everything is running properly, seems to be running properly and you're still having issues, what you might want to do is just try try a different email account. Um, I'm using this currently. I use Gmail. So this does come through with Gmail. This does come through with other uh, you know, consumer great services. Uh, but again, one of those things just to think about um, at the end of the day. And that's one reason too, why a lot of people when they do start to code, they decide to use something like SendGrid's API. So SendGrid is basically an email infrastructure for sending out massive emails. One of the reasons people decide to use a, the SendGrid API and even pay for the SendGrid API versus using this, although this is completely free, is SendGrid verifies their their email servers are not on blacklists. They verify, you know, things to make sure that it's most likely that emails will actually go through. And that's kind of like those higher level things that you really have to start thinking about when you go out and develop web apps versus simply just playing around and seeing what this technology will do.
So that's really all there is to the mail function and how to send email in PHP, and that's why it's important. And don't don't spearfish, please don't don't be a hacker. <laughs> don't don't be a hacker. Don't spearfish people, please.